That's the cutest dog in the whole wide world right there. <laughs> good boy, good boy. All right, welcome back to another Reality Check video. I'm gonna do a quick uh, 3D printing update. We've got the Moore Struder that I unboxed recently right there. And of course, Castro wants to be a part of it. He always wants to be a part of the videos. Um, so we've got the Moore Struder right here. And it's this beautiful, awesome production tool head that allows you to print, instead of 0.5 millimeter nozzle, it's got a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. And that actually just you know allows you to print a lot thicker and a lot faster because it's got a much bigger heating unit right there. So you know it, it can print just way faster. For example, I was able to print this guy over here in less than four hours. He was uh, just I think it was about three and a half hours to print this whole guy. So yeah, wonderful. Um, something like this, for example, took me two hours to print. And just so you can see how t how big it is on the machine there, that's about two hours right there to print something like that. So that's just it's way faster than anything ever would have been before. Um, just for fun, just for fun, I actually went into SketchUp and I took this uh, file and I just basically took a circular item and I cut out a little piece, I pulled up and I twisted it in the program and I printed it out just to see what it would look like and wow, I was amazed with how quickly and how fast it actually printed this guy. So now I've got my own drum. Actually what I use it for is I, I have to put the camera right here where I'm doing little uh, time lapses right there. So uh, anyways, uh, who knows what that could be used for, but a little storage device. And of course we have... We've got this guy right here, and he took just over three hours to make himself. So um, it's a really cool looking piece here, and this is just, it's just amazing that we can print these guys so quickly. So uh, I'll show definitely a bunch of time lapses if I can, but here we go. I noticed with this new Moore Struder tool head is that every single time I would print something, whether it was PLA, whether it was PETG, or even ABS, the experimental, right? Um, no matter what I would print with, they would all stick very, very, very tightly to the board, you know? They would bond so securely. So, um, one of the things that I realized is that you actually have to use this little glue stick they provide you with when you get the new tool head. And this glue stick is, is very important to use, especially you know if you're going to be using PETG or acrylic or anything that bonds to the bed. But like I said, I was even having trouble with ABS bonding to the bed. So these guys right here, um, as you can see, they've actually got kind of a glue on the bottom of them. But these are actually ABS that I printed with the Moore, uh, Moore Shooter. And uh, all of these guys, these were all ABS that I printed with the Moore Shooter. And of course I put glue on the bottom, so they've got, kind of got that glue on it. But this guy right here, he took less than 45 minutes to print. So less than 45 minutes, I had this guy printed, ABS smooth, took another couple hours. So anyways, you can do a lot of these cool different things with the Moore Struder, but you have to be careful with how they actually stick to the, the, the bed. So you want to make sure you put something down to make it easier to get them off. And of course, uh, you've also got to make sure you use, you know, use, use all the tools that you can to get these things off the tool bed properly without actually just pulling them straight up. You want to get a flat edge underneath it as best as possible and actually just completely push it up that way. Basically what I was doing is I got the flat edge underneath the part, you know, I was getting the flat edge underneath the part and then I was picking up trying to pull the part straight up, which is not what you want to do. You want to slice underneath the whole part to try to make it pop up. Um, anyway. So this is what was on there, and uh, when I took it off, as you can see, it's got kind of the cracks in there. That's where I actually pulled up the pieces from when I was putting the pieces on there. In two different spots, I pulled up the PEI board, uh, so it just it just did not, you know, not look pretty after that point. And the best way to actually take the PEI board off of this right here is if you put it in your freezer, put it in your freezer for like you know f f up to an hour. And when you pull it off, you can actually just take the edge and just pull it straight off. It's really loud because of the adhesive. <laughs> but you'll be able to pull it straight off. You know, mine came off in two pieces, so I got it off in two pieces. And then you've just got a bunch of adhesive on here, and the best way to get the adhesive off, I found, was not through heat, but was actually through using some isopropyl alcohol. So, yeah, using the alcohol allowed me to soak the bed, get the adhesive off. It still took about an hour. <laughs> it did not, did not come off easily, but I still got it off. And now you can see we have just a glass bed right here. But in the meantime, we went ahead and got another glass bed with the PEI board on there. That way we wouldn't have to stop production. And I've already installed that and used it. It works very, very well. 
just so you guys, if you have any questions. Actually switching a board out on this machine takes about mm, one minute, one minute. So all you have to do is you literally just disconnect these two pieces right over here. After you disconnect those guys, you use an Allen tool wrench to pull off each one of these four. Um, each one of these four little guys right there and you literally just a little bit of unscrewing pops these guys all off This piece just comes right off and you can take it to the side Put the new one right back on put the four screws back on put these two guys the two clips back in and you're ready to go So this is not a very difficult thing to install But uh, it's certainly not something that you want to have to install So be very careful with your prints and you won't have to you know replace your PEI board as long as you're very careful with it I was in a rush I was being too hurried, and had I been more careful, I do not think I would have broken it. It would have saved some money, right? So, Well, I better show you what I got over here real quick. So we have the ABS. These are actually for the Xbox controllers. As you can see, I've got the Xbox controller on the wall over there, and that is being held by a white version of one of these. So those are pretty cool. And then, of course, we've got these guys right here, which are going to be the magnetic clips, which are going to go on the ceiling, just like this guy is right here. So, you know, if you want to have the magnetic clips where you can pull them off, you put them back on really easily and move it around and pull your cords down and put them back up. You know, we're going to have a lot of those available and I'm just testing out all the different colors. As you can see, we've got a bunch of them over here. I've got the white, I've got some kind of a sparkly blue version of it. I've also got a clear version of it. Um, and then of course in here we've got like a red version of it with red scales and control. I mean, I've got red, I've got blue. It's really cool stuff. Got two different kinds of sensor holders over here. Other than the magnetic ones, we've got these kind of wall sensor holders that have a little piece on it, as well as these ceiling sensor holders that hold it up just like those. Vapor smooth touch. And this guy. So this is actually something that's kind of interesting. If you actually take acetone and you put it directly on the model, like I sprayed it with a spray bottle, it kind of turned powdery white on the black ABS. It did not get shiny like I expected it to. Um, so it was just kind of a weird thing. If you just vapor smooth it the correct way, it gets nice and shiny. So this is without directly spraying it, and this is with directly spraying it. So interesting, interesting, interesting. Also have rift mounts, of course, if you want to put your rift up on the wall, you can use rift mounts that I've got right there. Rift clips too, woohoo! Always your next rift clips. Okay, so I think that covers it for the 3D printing update. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys kind of what's gone on with the board replacement, why I had to replace it, and what you can do to prevent yourself from having to do the same. Of course, uh, the installation is very, very simple to do if you need to do it. It's just a little bit time consuming if you have to take off and replace the PEI board. Um, regardless, uh, you can do ABS with this Morse shooter, even though it says it's experimental. ABS does work, and what's actually kind of funny is they don't recommend this, of course, but I actually went into the PLA spiral mode, and I changed the settings to be a little bit slower, and of course to be a lot hotter, and I was able to print ABS, you know, vases without a problem. Um, the thing is, you'll notice every once in a while there's somewhat of an imperfection that happens. Um, that doesn't happen so much with the PLA or the other ones. Uh, maybe it's because the ABS just, you know, isn't used to being, I don't know, I don't know why. All I know is the ABS does print, does print well, and uh, when you vapor smooth the big ones, wow, it looks really, really nice. So not only that, they're very, very strong. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick video update. I will see you guys in the next one later. Bye.